Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I hope you had a wonderful Monday and I hope Tuesday's even better. I hope you're all healthy and staying home. And I was so happy to see some of my friends yesterday um, during our video chat. So if you didn't have a chance to hop on Mrs. Chessock's class, um, make sure you do next Monday because we're going to be doing a story time, okay? In Mr. Bell's class, I'm sure she's going to set up something like that for you guys soon. All right, so today we're going to get started, and I'm going to introduce you right away to your vocabulary in this story, this story right here, okay? And I bet you can make a prediction using that awesome reading brain of yours about what this story is going to be about, okay? And I will tell you that that very famous statue right there is one of our very, very most important, most recognizable symbols in the United States, isn't it? If you know what it is, you can go ahead and say it. Yeah, it's the Statue of Liberty. Awesome. And it is in New York City. So this story, the genre, is an informational text, which means it's not going to have flying unicorns and dragons and talking polar bears. This is something that you are going to learn something from. It's going to be filled with facts, and the author's purpose is to teach you something. Okay? So most of our studies, stories that we have read about and studied in our social studies unit have been informational texts because we're learning something. And the older we get and the smarter we get, the more informational texts we read because we want more information. Right? That makes sense. All right, so today I'm going to introduce you to some words that you might not know that you're going to see in your story, okay? And I've written them here. So as we go along in our story, you're going to see these. We're going to click on them, and we're going to read them. The first word we have is hosting, hosting. And hosting means to have someone over and to entertain them. So I'm sure you have had people over and you've hosted them. That means you've given them food, given them somewhere to stay, right? Hosting, okay, to have somebody come over to your home and to take care of them, right? Until they go back to their house. The next word we have is model, model. And a model is a smaller version of something else, okay? So you can have model cars. Who has a model car? Yeah, is it the same size as a real car? No, it's a smaller version but it almost is exactly the same, which is pretty cool. So that is a model car, all right? Interesting. If you're playing with Legos, you could also make a model of our classroom, a smaller version of what it looks like, okay, model. The next word we have is sure, sure, not sure, sure. There's that long O blank E that we were practicing this week, right? Sure, okay, and sure is where the water meets the land. And that's similar to the word coast, okay? Another long O word. This word right here is the word sculptor. Sculptor, we could say, sculptor. And a sculptor is somebody, an artist, okay? Somebody who makes things out of clay or different materials, okay? So you could sculpt something from a ball of clay to create it into shapes or art, sculptor. All right, our next word is immigrants. You may have heard this word before, immigrants. And immigrants are people who come from other countries into a new country. So almost everybody in America has a family member that was an immigrant from somewhere else. That means they came from a different country, okay? Say immigrants. And the last one is torch. Oh, I smeared my age. Torch. A torch is a stick that has fire coming out of it, okay? So you could carry a torch through a dark cave, okay? And I want you to look at the Statue of Liberty right there. She is holding a torch. Very good. Awesome job. So take a look at these words. Well, Pablo didn't like me whistling. He's coming over to check out what's going on. <laughs> so take a look at these words, and you're going to see them again in our story today, all right? So let's get ready to read. We're not going to do a picture walk today. We're just going to start with our story. I want you to listen. I want you to learn. I want you to use those reading strategies, okay? Stopping on each page and thinking about what you read. If you need to pause and ask a question, go ahead. Pause it. Ask mom, dad a question. Maybe you have a comment 
Maybe you visualized something as you were reading or you made a great connection. Just because I can't hear you doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing these things, okay? So let's start with our story today. Genre, informational text. Essential question, how does an object become a symbol? The Statue of Liberty by Sunil Raval, illustrated by Joanne Renaud. So here is our Statue of Liberty, right? That is an object, a thing. How did that become a symbol? A symbol is something that stands for something else. You know, the American flag is a symbol of the United States of America. So is the Liberty Bell that you learned about on ReadWorks. Yeah. A gift from France. The Statue of Liberty is a figure of a woman wearing a flowing gown and a crown on her head. She is holding a tablet in her left hand and a torch in her right hand. The statue is a symbol of freedom. And here's our word torch. But I did see another word that I didn't know what it was. She's holding a tablet. A tablet? Well, let me move Mrs. Cheslock for a minute. Does that look like the tablet that you have that she's holding right here? I don't think so. That does not look like the tablets that we have. A tablet is a piece of stone that has some writing on it. Okay, so that's what they used to use because they didn't have paper and pencil and things like that. So she's holding a tablet or kind of like a piece of stone or metal that has some things engraved on it. Let's look at the word torch. Torch, a long stick that has a flame at one end. The Olympic torch is carried all over the world. Torch. torch. The Statue of Liberty has stood on Liberty Island in New York Harbor for more than 125 years and was a gift from France to the United States. A young French sculptor came up with the idea. He wanted to honor the United States and its commitment to freedom. So, why did this young French sculptor why did he want to build the Statue of Liberty for us? Why did he want to give it to us as a gift? Let's go back in our text. Okay, He wanted to honor the United States and its commitment to freedom. Interesting. So we were committed, or we promised, to be a country where you could do what you want and choose what you wanted to do. And he liked that. Okay, So here is a picture of him, right, in the newspaper, in the Statue of Liberty being built. And let's see what this caption says down here. Caption tells more about a picture. This word's right under the picture. A newspaper shows images of the sculptor and the statue. Interesting. So there's the sculptor, the man who did it, and there's the statue starting to be built. Let's look at the word sculptor. Sculptor. Someone who makes sculptures. Art made from carving or molding materials. The sculptor molded the clay pot for his wife. Sculptor. Let's turn the page. Look at the heading on this page. Making the statue. So this is probably going to be about unicorns, right? This page? No, we know the heading tells us what the page is mostly about. So this is about making the statue. Now I see in this illustration right there, I see that that man right there with the measuring tape, he looks a lot like the man on the previous page. So I bet that is the sculptor. Let's read and find out about this page. Making the statue. First, the sculptor made a small model of the statue. Next, workers calculated how to take the same design and make it larger. Then, many people built the statue piece by piece. Some workers made the head, 
Others made the arm and torch. Wow, so I can draw a conclusion that not just one person worked on this statue, did they? Some people made the head, some people made the arms. Good, but it first started from a... Model, a small copy of something. We made model cars from kits. Model. Good. So the Statue of Liberty started as a model, just a tiny little one, and it looks like that's it right there. I see it. The statue was made from 340 sheets of copper. Each sheet was about as thick as two pennies. The metal was the color of a penny as well. Well, I can make a connection to that because I knew a penny is made of copper, that color. And look at the model right there. Do you see that? That is the same color as a penny because it's made of copper. And how much is a penny worth? One cent. Very good. How many sheets of copper was the Statue of Liberty made from? You can go back in their text. Look for keywords like sheets, copper, and maybe a number. 340, that first sentence in the second paragraph. Yes, good. In 1876, the United States turned 100 years old. The country was hosting the World's Fair to celebrate. The people of France sent the statue's arm and torch to the fair. Americans looked forward to seeing the entire statue when it was completed. Wow, so they didn't send the whole thing. They sent just one part of it. Which part did they send? You can see it in the picture here, but you can also go back in your text. Just the hand and the torch. So interesting, but look how huge it is. What was the country hosting that they decided to send the arm and the torch to? They were hosting the World's Fair. If you go back in your text, you can always find your answer, especially in an informational text. Let's look at hosting. The country was hosting the World's Fair. Hosting, a form of the verb host, to entertain other people as guests. We are hosting a party at our house. Hosting. Very nice. So us as the United States, we hosted the World's Fair. That means everyone from all over the world came to be at our fair. The statue took nine years to make. In 1885, it was finally shipped to New York in 214 boxes. Each box held one piece. Cheering crowds waited on shore when the ship came into New York Harbor. It took a year to put all of the pieces together. Wow, so this paragraph is filled with some information. How many years did it take for the statue to be built? I want you to go back in your text. How many years did it take to make? Check out this first sentence in the second paragraph right above the ship. The statue took nine years to make, right? How many boxes did it take to arrive in? Go back in that text again. Look for keywords like boxes. When it was shipped to us, just like you get packages shipped to you, how many boxes did all of the pieces of the Statue of Liberty come in? 214. Find that in your paragraph. Put your finger on it. In 214 boxes. That's so many. And I could see all of the people there. They were waiting. And I see all the boxes on the ship. And if you notice on that ship, there's a French flag. How long did it take to put all of the pieces of the Statue of Liberty together? Look at that last sentence on this page. It took a year to put all of the pieces back together. Very good. Oh, we didn't read the word hosting. Let's go back. Or shore, shore. Shore. To land along the edge of a body of water, like a beach. We picked up the litter along the shore. 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 
and all the people were wait waiting on the shore for all those pieces to come in. Nice job. Let's read the heading on this page. A symbol of hope. A symbol, something that stands for something else. And hope is to have positivity towards something, to think something as good is going to happen. So a symbol of goodness or greatness, right? Let's read. A few years after the construction of the statue, Ellis Island opened nearby in the harbor. This was the place where immigrants were admitted to the United States. Millions of people came to America seeking freedom. And here's where we're talking about immigrants, new people to a country. They came to Ellis Island that was constructed very close to the Statue of Liberty. Immigrants, plural form of immigrant, a person who comes to a country to live there. My grandparents were immigrants to the United States from Italy. Immigrants. And I can make a connection to that because my grandparents were immigrants from Italy as well. Okay, so, so many people came to America seeking freedom. And what do you think is one of the first things that they saw? Because it was tall, made of copper, and holding a big torch. The Statue of Liberty was one of the first things immigrants saw. People coming to America saw the statue as a symbol of hope and freedom. The statue welcomed them to their new country and their new lives. So no wonder it was considered a symbol of hope. I like this page a lot because this heading tells me fun facts about the statue. Fun facts about the statue. The Statue of Liberty is the tallest statue in the United States. It is over 300 feet tall from the ground to the top. Over time, it has turned a pale green color because of weather, such as rain and snow. Interesting. Wait, I have a question. But it said it was made of copper. Copper is the color of a penny, that brown, rusty color. Hmm. So, when copper is exposed to things like rain and snow and lots and lots of sun, it will turn this greenish color. Same thing if you were to leave a penny outside for a very, very long time. It would turn this greenish color. So that's why the Statue of Liberty looks like that grayish green, right? Interesting. And look how tall it is. It's huge. The statue's nose is four and a half feet tall. One finger is eight feet tall. That is taller than most adults. It is. So the statue's nose is four and a half feet tall. Just her nose. That's like bigger than my hands right here. You can't even fit it on my screen. That's a big nose, huh? Today, millions of people visit the Statue of Liberty. They ride on a ferry to get to the island. They want to see this symbol of our country. They want to travel to the top and look out from the crown. Yeah, so you can go all the way up to the crown. Sometimes they don't let you because of weather or if something might be wrong with the statue. But you used to be able to go all the way up. So there, I don't know if there's an elevator, but there are stairs. I think there's an elevator too. And it will take you all the way up to the top of her crown where you can look out. You saw lots of tourists, people coming just to see this beautiful symbol of our country. And though these are illustrations, this is the actual photograph that's outlined in orange right there. That's a real photograph of New York City and the Statue of Liberty. The statue is famous all over the world. People everywhere know that it stands for freedom. It stands for a country where people are free. The Statue of Liberty remains an important symbol for our country. And it absolutely does. Very good. And we made it to the end of our story. Very good. So I'm going to ask you two questions here, and I want you to pause and answer them. Then we're going to move on to our assignment for the day. One. 
The Statue of Liberty was a gift from what country? Why was it given to us? Who gave us the Statue of Liberty? If you said France, you are correct, and you did an awesome job reading. That means you understand what you read. Why did France give it to us? Because they loved our idea of freedom. And they were impressed. And that sculptor said, you know what? I'm going to send them a present. Let's read number two. Two. For what reason are pennies mentioned in this selection? Why don't we talk about pennies? Hmm. Maybe I don't remember and I need to go back. I'm going to go back to where it talks about pennies. Hmm. I don't see pennies there. I don't see pennies there. Hmm. Hmm. I think they talked about pennies on this page. Oh, each sheet was about as thick as two pennies, and it was made from copper. Oh, so that's why they were talking about pennies, because it was the same color and made from the same material as pennies. Nice job. Let's flip back to our title page. Great reading, great paying attention today. So today... We are going to use our skills practice books and we're going to use our knowledge of our new vocabulary words to complete these pages. So go ahead and get your skills practice book. If you need to hit pause and grab your book, that's fine. Pause it right here. <laughs> and grab your skills practice book. You have your vocabulary words that you've already learned so well today inside your gray box. You are going to match it to its definition. Okay. Now maybe you need to go back and you want to rewatch this video. That's absolutely fine. I would love that. After you match it to the definition, turn the page. Doo -doo -doo -doo. You are going to circle the word that correctly completes each sentence. So number five we'll do together. All right. Number five. Let's see if you can see it. I made a blank plane and hung it from my ceiling. Our options for our answers are A, brick, B, model, or C, hop. I made a blank plane and hung it from my ceiling. What do you think could go there? Brick, model, or hop. Model, yes. A model is a small version of something. Would you hand, hang a brick plane? Would you hang a hop plane? No, that doesn't make sense. And you know now that the word model means a smaller version of something big. Nice job. So you're going to complete those pages, boys and girls, on your own. I am so proud of all the work you've been doing, so proud of how you've been turning things in. Ms. bell has been telling me amazing things about all of you. I love it, I love it, I love it. Keep watching these videos. Keep on top of your work, keep stretching that brain, keep reading, reading, reading as much as you can, okay? I will see you soon. Stay healthy, stay smart, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Complete your work and post it to Google Classroom. Bye!